Like, everyone wants to be a N-word until it's time to be an N-word. The funny thing about America is that white people are allowed to carry guns, but when black people carry them, suddenly it's a problem. Black people don't have dads. Well, I'm pretty sure black people would have more dads if you guys would stop killing them. We have this movement called Black Lives Matter, but the truth is in America, black lives do not matter. No one cares about black people. Let's talk about it. Salut le pub, hi family, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. Feel free to hit that subscribe button, you will not regret it. So just a little trigger warning, this is going to be about police brutality against black people. So if that's something that's not really comfortable for you, if that's something that can bring back trauma, feel free to exit the video and you can come back another time. So by the title of the video, you can already tell that I'm going to be talking about race today. It wasn't planned. Um, I didn't know that this topic was going to be my next upload. However, with everything that happened this week, I wasn't in the mood um, to shoot what I originally intended to. I decided to talk about this. It's going to be more of a rant type of... Um, type of video just to express myself say what i have to say on this topic it's not really planned so um feel free to stay i was really upset um with everything that happened this week if you're not aware a few black men have been murdered this week in the states and it really took a toll on me because as much as I'm informed and I know about police police brutality and racism in America, it still baffles me that in 2020, it's still a thing and that being black can get you killed. It's absolutely absurd to me. It's very hurtful as a black woman myself just to know that our skin color can trigger so many people and create so much evil in them. It just doesn't make sense to me. This video had surfaced on the internet and it went viral of um, this young man named Ahmad Arbery. I'm just looking at my notes. So uh, this young man named Ahmad Arbery and he was 25 year old and he lived in Georgia. He was going for a run in his neighborhood and he was unarmed and he was killed by a father and his son who had um, heard that there was burglaries in the neighborhood and Ahmad apparently fit the description of the said suspect and decided to take matters into their own hands. Unfortunately, I've seen the video and he was unarmed. There was no reason for them to shoot him. It was just pure hate crime. The crazy thing about all of this is that he was murdered on uh, February 23rd, okay? And they were arrested yesterday. It took four months for an arrest to be made and people are saying that the only reason he was arrested is because everything went viral and people were demanding justice. However, if we hadn't seen all this footage, what would be happening to those two men? They'd be walking around free. And it's just crazy to me how much black lives don't matter to a lot of America and a lot of the world. It's just crazy to me. Um, another one, and that one really struck me. So Sean Reed was a 21 year old black man living in Indianapolis and his murder was caught on tape. Um, he was being chased by the police while he was in his car and he decided to film it on Facebook Live. As he gets out the car, he was running, he got tasered and he falls to the ground and so does his phone facing the sky. As he's on the ground, he gets shot multiple times by a police officer and his phone stays up and you don't hear anything anymore. So you know that he passed. One of the police officers made the comment, that's a closed casket, homie. When I heard that, I had no words, honestly. I was so shocked that such a statement could be made with a lifeless body right in front of you. And that's not even the worst part. So I guess as that was being said, they had no idea that he was on live. Once one of the police officers caught on, he tried hiding his face and he hovered over the phone and he stopped the live and he deleted the live. 
why would you delete it? Why would you play with evidence like that? Once an interview happened, they had the audacity to say that he was armed. The funny thing about America is that white people are allowed to carry guns, but when black people carry them, suddenly it's a problem. It gives the cops an excuse to kill black people because they had a gun. You're not that trigger happy when white people have them. I saw this video of this white man walking around with his gun while the police are aiming their guns at him and they didn't shoot. Had it been a black man, they would have shot that man dead, but because he was a white guy, nothing happened there's just so many instances of black people being killed because of racism and to hear people say in 2020 that we need to get over it slavery happened such a long time ago oh it didn't affect you directly why do you still care it's still happening today it's not because black people are in the fields picking cotton that there's not something wrong going on and there's very much so modern day slavery going on right now. I read an article the other day saying that in some prisons in the South of America, prisoners, obviously mostly black, have to pick cotton and if they refuse to pick cotton, they get sent to the hole, so solitary confinement. And then you have the audacity to tell us to not make everything about race and to not be outraged when our people are getting killed in the streets. A Tatiana Jefferson was a 28-year-old black woman and she was killed in her home in Texas. So the article said that her door was open. One of her neighbors called the police to do a welfare check on her. So as the police pull up, she decides to go look out the window to see what's going on. As soon as she looks out the window, she gets shot. Why? What broke my heart is that not only she got killed in the comfort of her own home, but she was there with her eight-year-old nephew. Now imagine yourself as an eight-year-old, you're playing games with your auntie and she gets shot right in front of you. That type of trauma is something that sticks with you your whole life. Who knows what kind of repercussions that kind of trauma is gonna have on that child for the rest of his life. Philando Castile, that was about four years ago, if I'm not mistaken. He was a 32-year-old black man he was stopped. The police had asked him for his license and as he was reaching for his license, he informed the officer that he had a gun, but he wasn't reaching for his gun. The police officer kept telling him, don't reach for your gun. Philando was saying, I'm not reaching for my gun. As he's trying to do what the officer told him, which is to grab his license, he gets shot seven times in front of his girlfriend and in front of his daughter. You often hear those jokes of, Black people don't have dads. Well, I'm pretty sure black people would have more dads if you guys would stop killing them. You can't make fun of us for not having fathers when you're the murderers. Make it make sense. Now you have this case of Edmund Till, who was a 14 year old black man, and he was killed in Mississippi like in 1955. And he was accused of offending a white woman because he whistled at her. Some guys related to the woman they decided to go to where to his house to abduct him they beat him they shot him and they dumped his body in the river several years later she confessed that she had lied she made it up guess what happened to her absolutely nothing and to have some people telling us that we're overreacting and that we make everything about race is very much offensive. I have this tweet, uh, one of the hosts of a podcast named Woke or whatever, super, super interesting podcast. Two black women talk about feminism, colorism, like honestly, the topics are amazing. I'll link it in the description. It says, white people can defend animal rights without ever hearing an animal explain why their lives are precious. If images and stories of the violence black people are facing isn't enough to gain your sympathy, I don't know what to tell you. She's right. When it comes to animal rights, white people are in the forefront, you know, first not good, let's wear full fur, stop wearing leather, all of that. But when it comes to black rights, crickets. When it comes to black issues, it doesn't concern you, you don't care. If you're a white person and you're watching this and you've been silent, ask yourself why is it that an animal life matter more to you than a black life? Like this reporter was saying, when it comes to several movements such as LGBTQ, women's right, contesting, Muslim bans and all of that, black people are always out there defending people. 
But when it comes to us, crickets. I'll, I'll put it right here. Looking around and black people are saying, where are you guys at? We're looking at the historical context that every time there's an issue, mm -hmm. when there's LGBTQ, we go on the front lines and we say, hey, we're going to fight with you guys for what's right. When we say we're putting up a Muslim ban, black people are there saying, we're going to fight for you guys because that's not right. When you say that we want the Me Too movement, black women started that. And a woman named Yamanika, who's an artist, brought this up, that every time there's voting rights for women, black women are on the forefront. So where is everybody at? Where is everybody at right now? We need everybody. This is not a black and white issue. This is a right and wrong issue. And if you're silent right now, you're basically saying that a black life is worth being killed, black lives don't matter, and that you're okay with the oppressor. Because I see people with tons of extra time on TikTok, dancing around, posting on Instagram every day because we have more time than we've ever had before. But if you can't take the time out to make a call, send a text, post a video, or tell your friends why this is wrong, then shame on you. Shame on you that you think that our lives are still worthless when we fight for you every single time. I should be able to say the n-word because it's just a word and why would it belong to a group of people blah 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 like everyone wants to be a n-word until it's time to be an n-word you talk the talk but you wouldn't be able to walk the walk matter of fact you do not want to walk that walk because once you're done profiting off of black culture you take it off you're done and you go back home to your whiteness or to your whatever it is because honestly let's be real here being a person of color doesn't automatically mean that you're an ally to black people. You guys don't want to be black. And for us, it's annoying because we can't get rid of it. We can't take it off. It's not a costume that we put on when we feel like it and then we take it off. Still black, it's not coming off. And to see those same people profiting off of our culture, being silent when we're being murdered in the streets, I'm gonna have to have that talk with my kids. I'm gonna have to have that talk with my sons. We carry this worry and no one wants to share that with us. It's just your pain, your problem, your business. We just realize that our realities are not the same and it's crazy.